everyone. Welcome to the Tyria Weekly. I am Ozaris, and I'm joined by Mr. McCheese. As always. As Hello always. Everyone. Hello. <laughs> uh, Hello. In today's episode, we have uh, some uh, things to talk about. We will be talking about some general MMO news, some Guild Wars related news, uh, and then we'll be talking a bit about uh, community and what arena nets want with the community and we'll just elaborate on that uh, as we go along to communities in general and MMOs and what's good and what's bad and, and that sort of stuff and then uh, of course the profession of the week which will be the warrior so uh, which of course will be the warrior what else should it be silly yeah the warrior the only three classes we've played so far. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm kind of hoping that beta again is coming up soon, otherwise we're just... <laughs> Done. Yeah, exactly. So there's this other class called the Ranger. I, I don't know what it does. I mean, I think it throws stones at people. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what have you been doing this week besides being awesome? Oh, yeah, you know, but that's kind of what I do, right? So it's... Not doing much else, just walking around the street, you know, people looking at him and being, oh wow, he's kind of awesome. But, no. Yeah. Yeah. Straight face. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he woke up. And then he woke up, so. Um, but no, what I have, I've been doing, enjoying the weather for once, hmm. except that right now it is sunny outside, it's 25 degrees Celsius, just. And. And I, my, my curtains are, you know, I, um, it looks it looks weird when I have the when when the sun is going through my window because the sun is, you know, right out there, and if I don't have the curtains for it will, well, light up half my face. So half my face will be in totally, uh, you know, blinding light, and the other half of my face just being pure shadows. It just looks, looks flash odd. of light. So like, the devil and God on each side. Yeah, pretty much like that. But it it looks it looks strange. I don't like it. Uh, All right. So, but yeah, I've been enjoying the weather. I think that's that's the the best part of it. It's it's suddenly arrived here in Denmark, and it's been awesome. Yeah, I must say uh, the same here. Really, um, it's the last couple of days have been really nice, like 25 degrees. A bit too warm for my taste, I guess. But <laughs> that's just the way it is. You have to get used to it, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, we've been playing some Diablo three and. Uh, True enough. Are you are you enjoying? What, what, is, the what is the other game called? <laughs> <laughs> are you playing Champions Online? Champions or? Online. That's that's or the game. Iron. No. Yeah, that what? too. But uh, mostly Champions Online. Uh, we have a video of that. We will link that in the description. Go watch it. It's fun. Just a, a quick first impression we did as uh, to try something new. Yeah. Uh, but but Diablo that. Diablo three. Um, yeah. It's a good game, but I don't I don't see why it is hyped so much. I don't see the, the hype so much around it. I don't. <laughs> to be honest, I'm starting to agree with you. I was t I was saying to earlier today, just playing some single player because I'm. So yeah, okay, we've been playing co-op together, right? And we have like a level some twenty something characters. In, in I guess we are soon done with that too. And I've been playing a bit of single player as well, just you know to to get the story and uh, and to try another class and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I found myself being bored. I was just learning, just sitting, just click, click, it's clicking flat. away, you know, and just. Uh, I've never seen so much hype around a game that's actually just a big grind fest. I mean. But that that's that's Diablo Four right there, and it probably is kind of fun. I mean, that there's not much to it. It's all it is. It is about the grind. It is about getting the gear. It is, um, and of course, being challenged. I guess that's a huge part of it as well. But not a normal mode. No, exactly. Why? Why can't we? Why are we? stuck in normal mode for the first playthrough. I mean, it's... I've been spending quite a lot of hours in it already and I just want to be done with the normal mode, but it is so freaking boring because yeah. it's so easy. Yeah, totally. And by the time yeah. I, get, I get to that and I can start over again, I have to. you have to start over the same story again just to play a harder mm. mode and that's like freaking tedious. But So ho hopefully the difficulty will kind of make up for it. Yeah. Hopefully we'll suddenly see see the light and just go. We need more items, more epics. Yeah. You know, I'm just uh, trying to fix your screen here a bit. There. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So, but yeah, I'm I'm still hoping that we'll have a lot of fun with it once we get through the null mode. So, uh, and uh, and hope hopefully try some hardcore. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. That will be fun. Um, so the first game, our first MMO related news is the Elder Scrolls Online will be 100% solo ball uh, in single player. Yeah, that's uh, it's been kind of all all of the news. So yeah, this is just from Tom's hardware. That's just the one I. God damn it, stupid side. <laughs> Sorry, I, was just... I had those ads that people use. What? You have ads all over the place. I don't. That's odd. That must be something weird I've installed in or something. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, you have installed an add-on to your browser that actually generates ads. That could be. Because there isn't enough ads on regular ha in, on regular uh, home pages, so weird. Um, no, but yeah, that was a that was an interesting piece of news. So apparently, it's. I mean, I, I kind of dig what they're saying that okay, going out to slay a dragon is cool. Going out to slay a dragon and have to stand in line so fifteen other people can kill the same dragon is kind of, uh, you know. True, but this is an MMO. Massively multiplayer online <laughs> game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does it have to be solo ball? Why not do it like Guild Wars 2 does or something and make everything, you know, something happens and everyone can just go there and do it rather than you get a quest to kill a dragon and, <laughs> uh, wait, that doesn't really work, so we'll just make it solo ball instead. That's kind of. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 tot I, t I totally agree with, just, with what you're saying and. To be honest, I'm kind of. I, I hope they're going to make some kind of, you know, combination between the the, the single player part and the MMO somehow. Because I don't want to, you know, like, okay, so you're gonna link when when you play when you level up, you know, this is will be a single player game, and then when we reach max level, it's gonna be a, an MMO. It'll be it'll be weird. So I, I I really hope they're gonna do it in a good way. But I see I see why they're doing it. It's to try and keep it epic. So but. Of course, if it's an MO, you need to be able to, you know, meet all players, play with all players, team up, uh, you know, play with friends, all that stuff. Otherwise, it's just really awkward. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, and even in Guild Wars 2, uh, you have, like, this, this the personal story, which is very much a personal experience, but you can make your other friends go in with you. And at some point, you probably also need to because the, com the content is just going to be too hard to solo. Uh, I die on in the beta. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it invites people to you know help out. Hey, can you help out with my personal story? Uh, and I, of course, I don't I don't have any details on how they're going to implement it if they're going to do the similar system. But it seems kind of weird that the whole story is just 100 percent solo. That yeah, exactly. At the same time, interesting. Uh, Maybe it will work really well. I don't know. But at the same. Uh, at least, at least they're saying that the way they're gonna do a go about, you know, making, uh, giving you a quest and stuff, it's not by, you know, having quest hubs that you're going to and then gathering quests and then going out in the world. You're going to go out in the world, uh, Guild Wars 2 style, and then you, you know, you'll decide to go and explore something, and then something will pop up where at that you're going to explore some ruins, and there'll just be something popping up there. Perhaps there'll be some kind of objective for you. Perhaps you'll just be doing stuff, and then objectives will automatically occur. Or you'll get rewarded for having killed some uh, some bandit camp, and then you'll release a prisoner, and you're going to get rewarded for that, or whatever it is. You know, yeah. it seems like they're trying to go that way. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if they can actually. It sounds like it sounds kind of like Skyrim, right? With uh, perhaps less quests and more just. Uh, but but they are they're talking about talking dragons on your own, and then what's the point of having all those people that do the same thing in the same world? Because well, yeah, exactly. you're the, you're like, oh, exactly. I just soloed a dragon. I don't need you guys, but hey, I did that as well. Oh, I did that as well. And is it gonna be a Skyrim with battlegrounds? That's that, that just seems really, really weird. I mean, I have to get to see it in action, but I don't know. At least in Guild Wars 2, the personal story is just like this small story in the sideline. You're not gonna do a huge dynamic event. At least I don't think so. Yeah. And uh, it's the way they describe it, like the dragon things, and like. You're an MMO, of course you need more people to kill a dragon, that makes sense, but no, it's going to be solo. That perhaps it's just going to be big events that are kind of, you know, solo. Mm -hmm. So they'll may, my, might be that they have some kind of build-up to big events, and then the big events you're going to do on your own, but all the, the build-up you might be doing and together with other people, you know, 
in, in kind of a dynamic event, uh, what's it called, open quest style of way. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, I, I hope you'll be getting some more information soon, and I hope you'll be getting some real gameplay footage. The soon. game is going to come out next year, right? So. Uh, I think so. It has get been some in development since 2007 or something, so... They've kept that around the wraps, I mean, there have been... I mean, there have always been, like, speculation of that, but... I've always personally said, no, please don't, but... You know, yeah. it will be interesting to see what they do with it anyway. It's it's not what I'm not thinking, uh, you know, MMO when I'm thinking uh, the Elder Scroll in any way, so... They they better do it damn well, because otherwise I'll never forgive them. I, I prefer my Elder Scrolls to be solo uh, single-player games, and not... And not MMOs with single player content. <laughs> no, definitely not. But uh, you know, maybe they'll work it out uh, really well. Uh, yeah. But that's that. Next up, uh, 38 Studios. So there was a little bit of conflict with this. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of conflict, yeah, you might say that. Yeah. Um, there, that's a better view. Um, so. What happened was uh, 38 Studios has been working on an MMO since 2006. Uh, their main goal was an MMO, but uh, to introduce people to that MMO world, they released a single-player game called Kingdoms of Am Amalur Reckoning, uh, which has sell sold pretty well and got some pretty decent reviews. It's a pretty good game, but it's, it's according to most people, a bit a bit too generic when it comes to story. Uh, not not too immersive, not like not like Skyrim, for example, but uh, it, nonetheless, a pretty decent game. Uh, but what happened was they failed to pay uh, a payment on their loan. They they loaned like how much from the state? That was hundred uh, million, something like that. That was crazy. Uh, and they failed to make a payment of one point two five million, uh, and then they tried to pay it, but the the check bounced and then uh, later on they actually managed to now pay it uh, at the cost I must say for uh, not paying their employees for a month and uh, that's kind of sad to hear for people in that industry that they don't get money for what they're doing because they have quite an artistic team as far as I know yeah so, uh, but and they also ax I think they axed a lot of people as well I saw that in a post somewhere yeah and a lot of people seem to be fleeing the studio as well because of the you know, now it's out, out in the open that they don't have any money, so if you... I mean, <laughs> this would be a good time to just go out and look for another another job, you know? Yeah. If, I, if you're hired there. I wonder what's going to happen to the MMO now, because they, re they released a video of the flyover, and it's due to come out in 2013, I think, as well. Or late this okay. year, even. It, it, it's, it looks damn good, so it's not impossible that some other other studio will uh, take a over. publisher I, is going to take over if they if they're going to if they're going to you know do are they are they going to take that risk? That's another question. I don't know. I mean, what's what's going to happen now? I mean, they lost a lot of staff, and then if they can get back up to their payment again, which but, seems but unlikely. But other, ga other games have been yeah, but other, yeah, exactly. But I mean. It, it wouldn't be the first time that, you know, some other studio or a publisher is going to take over a, a half-done game and then they're going to, you know, Max Payne, on. Max Payne, and uh, that game we that just I just sh showed you right <laughs> now, what the fuck is it called? Uh, yeah, good question. What Dirty Dogs, the... Showdown, Sleepy Dogs, <laughs> I don't... which was first called True Crime and it got dropped by Activision and uh, Square Enix actually picked that up and it's going to get released now. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not... My d the difference is that's a s smaller game. Sleeping this is an dog. MMO. This game costs so much money, and in order to make money off it, it needs to go well. And that's that's the downside of the MMO. Uh, I was first thinking, why doesn't EA just pick it up? You know, because they have lots of money. But I already stated that they're not going to do that. I think so. But EA already, you know, have kind of been burned a bit on the on the Star Wars front. front. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to spend a lot of money on a new MMO anytime soon. No, and uh, the same with Warhammer Online, they also got burned with that. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, they're just going to sit back for a bit, just see how, how things, you know, evolving within the MMO industry, trying to get some pointers on, uh, you know, which game is going to do good and not so good and stuff, perhaps keeping an, an eye on uh, Guild Wars 2. And then Definitely, but I, I, think that, that. I think that plays a huge role in their decision because they know that Guild Wars 2 is getting, you know, released soon and that game has a lot of hype around it and the only reviews in previously are really positive, so 
they're probably yeah. watching out for that and see what what's gonna happen with that. I would just need to sell good, so. Uh. I, th I think it's pretty hard to release a good MMO these days. It's the one that only really survived uh, when free to play, except for Rift, which still I think holds one or two million players. I'm not quite sure, but. That many? Yeah, I think so. That's that's very well done then. I actually thought they had less, but. Uh. It could be less. I could be just talking out of my ass right now. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, exactly. It's it's a tough business for sure, and so a lot a lot of games are going free to play, and Guild Wars 2 is just going free to play right out. Uh, you know. We're gonna touch on uh, this subject later, but I, th I think free to play is definitely, you know, for a new MMO, I think that's the best way to go. If you have a good system in place, then it's it's a much safer bet than a subscription because subscription puts so much people off to begin with anyway. Skeptic, skeptics. I mean, I I know I am personally, so. Yeah, yeah, well, same here, you know, because at least if the game is, if the game is a you know a one-time uh, investment, if you will, and and then you can always pick it up and you can play it a bit and you can get back, you can get back to it later and all that stuff. You don't really have any huge commitment to it. Whereas if you're you know paying to it every month, then you gotta get something for those money. Yeah. Which kind of brings us to our next topic, uh, GameBreaker.tv. We released this article about MMOs are dead. And basically talks about the fact that nobody really buys MMOs anymore after Star Wars. Uh, and they talk about uh, how hard it is to make a good MMO. But in order to sell an MMO, they say that you know you need to be able to so bring something new to the table and be innovative rather than do the safe copy of WoW and add a few stuff like most games have done. I don't know if you need to be hugely innovative. Um, no, I but mean, you need to do at least something different because why would we want to play a game that is almost the same, only a little bit different? Yeah. Because while World of Warcraft is already a good game, why would I play a game that's exactly like that, only a little bit different? If it's free. But yeah, if it's uh, if it's free if to it's play, then it's a, yeah, then, then exactly. So I I think the problem is that you can't really be you can't really depend on the subscription model at this point, at least not. You have some pretty big games you have to be competing with if you're going with a subscription model because I, I don't see a lot of people going out and having, you know, multiple, uh, up, there's not a lot of people going out to and, and uh, that wants to have multiple subscriptions at the same time where you're paying $15 euros or whatever each month to a game. That's just not, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. So, so what I think will happen will be that Either there'll be a lot of players who have different subscription uh, MMOs they are playing, but they'll be playing at a different time. So like, okay, I'm getting kind of tired of this game now. I'll be going over to this other game, and then I'll just put this game on hold. And you know, so they will you know, have an active subscription, but they'll have it at different games at different times, and and we'll be jumping a bit back and forth. Uh, especially if you are one of those guys who are consuming content rather fast, then you then it may be an idea to actually have multiple games you're playing, so you can switch between them. Yeah, uh, but but that can only really sustain so many <laughs> so many different games, subscription-based games. Yeah. So I, I definitely see you know free-to-play games being the way to go, more or less. Yeah, definitely because it, you know it's much easier because we get buy games all the time, be it good or bad, and we pay like forty, fifty euros for them, uh, and it's much easier to do like, hey, that looks interesting, I'll just buy it and try it, you know, uh, mm -hmm. whereas World of Warcraft maybe buy it and try it. Uh, you know, I don't want to be bound to a subscription. Even though you usually get like a free month, it's still yeah, uh, it's consideration to make because what if you get into that? Then you do need to pay that 15 euros a month. So, uh, where free to play games is just, you know, you've seen it. We've seen it in the past with uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online and Lord of Rings Online. They they jumped in people that started playing suddenly because it went free to play. So exactly. I mean, a lot of those games, they, uh, the only reason they exist today is probably because they're free to play. Hmm. And, and okay, some of the games I know in a in kind of a situation now where they're only being maintained and not developed anymore. But as far as I can tell, most of the games we have been playing, at least, who are free to play, are, are still getting new content out at a somewhat regular basis. Yeah, definitely. And But I think the, most, most, the biggest problem with that has been always that free to play games we're always seen as like a bad game, right? Because you went back in World of Warcraft was dominating and still is actually, but most free to play games that came out were all like, ah oh, shit, because 
they're free, why would they be good, you know? And people had like mm -hmm. a very narrow, narrow minded view towards free to play games. Whereas now, when, you know, Guild Wars 1 was successful with it, and Guild Wars 2 has a good system in place, and other games have been doing it and had success with it, it seems like people are adapting to that that is actually a, a better option than playing paying per month, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's especially like paying per month, you you kind of feel forced to play it as well a bit more and you can expect more content and I think that's a big problem with WoW is that you pay per month but not so sure how well you see it like in content wise compared to a free to play game so not in, I mean you're getting some huge some huge patches for World of Warcraft but I think the problem is that they have so many customers that are trying to make content for right now so each individual customer might not be getting as much to you know what he likes to do so, so in that way, it may be easier to find another MMO that are focusing more specifically on what you like, and and play that, and then maybe you'll actually be getting more content. Yeah. For you know whatever it is you like to do. Yeah. Um, but I guess that the only the only problem with Guild Wars 2, if you will, is just that you have to pay these is it 60 bucks or something upfront, which is of course the price of of a regular game, but uh, a lot of the free-to-play games right now are actually straight up free to play you don't even have to put any money down up front yeah. um, but those free to play models are different because you often have to pay for stuff that you need in in order to progress yeah, more into the game whereas yeah, Guild Wars 2 is, com uh, is, is completely free to play you can play the game without yeah. having to pay anything so and of course Guild Wars 2 kind of have some more um, expenses to cover whereas at least many many Previous free-to-play games, they they were subscription-based games that maybe have have made some money already, and no. so yeah, of course, good games have to cost up front, and and Guild Wars 2 is no doubt one of the biggest uh, MMO releases we are going to we are going to see this year, and and one of the biggest for a number of years as well. Yeah, I certainly think so. So on to so, some more really Guild Wars 2 related news. Uh, we've got a nice uh, Stone Dragon. Yes, I actually forgot to link this last week uh, because this is from when they le reached the 500,000 likes on Facebook mark uh, or milestone and this is the art that they gave and it actually looks quite cool. I actually read that they made this from a screenshot and they remade it into an art piece or something like that. Wait, wait, wait. So they made a dragon in the game? They made a model of a dragon like in the computer, put it in the game then took a screenshot of it and then make the made the concept. No, of course they had the artwork <laughs> before already, but they made this specific artwork based on a screenshot that they took or something like that. Oh. It it actually reminds me a bit of the part in the video trailer that they show, the end of one of the trailers. I think it's mm -hmm. the manifesto, which is kind of cool. But yeah, the uh, amazing art design. That's that's for sure. Yeah, and and you know, amazing looking dragon. I, I still, I'm still excited to see uh, what kind of huge bosses and mobs we're gonna run into out in the world when once it gets released. Because I've seen so many, you know, different uh, gameplay videos or trailers or whatever for the game where they're fighting some pretty big and nasty things. And in in the the well, in in this well, both the stress test and the, and the beta weekend, the biggest thing I saw was some kind of cave troll, I think. Yeah. Uh, or a, a yeti or whatever it was. So, I'm I'm still pretty far off from seeing any and even small dragons. So, yeah, yeah, actually, there's a video of the Shadow of the Behemoth event, which is like this big shadowish creature that pops out uh, after a while uh, from a part from an event chain, and uh, that's actually around the level 15-ish area, if I'm correct. So, 15? yeah. Wow. So what, what we just missed <laughs> out, man. We, I think uh, we need to explore a bit more next beta yeah, weekend. You, you were slaying dragon all the time in the beta weekend. Where were you? Let's come to that <laughs> point immediately. No beta weekend this weekend, sadly. Uh, they said yeah. they would try to do one every month, but ReadyNet is actually a company that has beta, betas for a reason. They let people play. They got information from it. Based on that, they did another stress test. And now they're actually reconfiguring their hardware and they actually, you know, use the input that they got for players to improve the game rather than using the beta for trying to sell their game, you know, for yeah, trial. Yeah. I, and Which I really, uh, really, really find that good. I really dig that, that they're doing that. 
you might argue that the players in the beta have already you know purchased the game so <laughs> sure uh, but but yeah yeah I agree uh, the the beta is definitely there to, to test the game and to improve the game and not really you know to give to give people uh, some hands on time because well you'll be getting plenty of time with it once once it's released mm. uh, but it was it was kind of interesting the way so so they had like three uh, Facebook posts in a row about this topic yeah I, I can show you one right now. Um. Sorry, sorry. Uh, there it is. You got it? Okay. This is the last one that they posted. It's uh, saying, a reminder of the Guild Wars 2 community philosophy, our ultimate goal is to create an environment that is respectful, welcoming, inc inclusive, and friendly. This holds true for our community both in and out of the game, uh, including here on Facebook page. We have always welcomed questions on Facebook, even negative feedback in form of constructive criticism. At the same time, we will continue to ensure that the page reflects our community philosophy that means that all discussion needs to remain on topic when the post when we post information and con conversation everywhere is respectful and mature what does this mean for you it means that posts containing hate speech swearing bickering or insulting directed to arena nets or other community members will be removed as spam or troll posts such as posting over and over to flood topics with particular agenda uh, we will continue to remove posts that fall these categories, blah 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 blah. Anyway, so that they just, you know, are straight up that they don't mind criticism and they don't mind people discussing the game as long as it's nice and friendly and not like excessive and annoying. Like a lot of people have been asking for beta weekends and yeah. giving them shit for like, you know, you promised this, you promised that, and I want my money back and all that shit. So, well, that, that was actually that was uh, that was uh, I would say two out of three because so yeah the first one was just okay no beta weekend or this weekend you know we will be trying to be hitting these uh, to get these weekends going on a monthly basis but we can't do that all the time you know no. it's it, it was kind of a, a, a regular uh, <laughs> a news news update uh, regarding stuff like that you know they they're apologizing that they can't do it but development and all that stuff it's all good it's all fine you know and just, yeah, so apparently that didn't got received very well. So they made the post you just uh, read aloud. That okay, listen, guys, it's all we are okay. We open to criticism, but you guys got to turn it down because apparently people are going crazy about the first one. Yeah. Um, and then they they made the the last post in this little posting series, uh, where where they're saying that um, they. What what they've been doing after the first beta weekend and after the first uh, and after the stress test, and they're just, just saying this. Okay, uh, what happened was that some some people didn't have you know a very good experience because uh, the servers were getting uh, uh, were getting I don't know overheated or whatever. They they had uh, they had some technical issues, and they wanted to solve those before the next beta weekend. So they are currently working on upgrading upgrading their hardware. Yeah. Um, and and it is it is rather interesting, you know, that they're getting out in that order because to me it seems like they they should have been starting with the latest one, and then maybe they wouldn't be having to to you know make the second one, if you will, because yeah, but that that's true. But I th I just think that they're they're just a lot more laid back than most fans are, and they don't worry about people that much with negative criticism you know uh or you know people getting impatient they don't worry too much about it and they just go whatever they need to do uh and i don't know when people got this impatient either what the hell some people are just straight up obnoxious in these posts like you know i paid my money where's my beta you promised once a month no they didn't promise once a month they said they would try to do it once a month but it can be later and it seems like uh I don't know. People take things way too literal, and they, they like like they don't do anything else than just sit in front of that all day and obsess about it. Yeah, I agree. There's there's no excuse for being you know for going crazy or uh, posting uh, hate comments or uh, spamming or whatever people have been doing. There's no excuse for that. I I completely agree. But it, it probably it, most of it probably just boils down to you know that we haven't been hearing anything, and then 
very, very shortly before uh, the weekend, they're telling us that, okay, that's not going to be a beta weekend. And people have been kind of hyped about it, and, and Arena has been very silent about it. So no, well, at the same I'll, time, I'll, though, they said that we try to do it every month, and when there's no info coming, doesn't that just mean that there's not one coming? I mean, I mean, sure, yeah. they, they can give a little bit more information, but it seems to me that they are actually doing something, and they don't know... I probably didn't know if there was going to be this weekend or no. next weekend. It's probably going to be next weekend. You'll probably see a post on that next week or something. Uh, because they, they didn't make it in time with the hardware and stuff like that that they're trying to do. So. I know, but yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's it's probably just that they, they just need a stable build and then they can make the beta whenever, right? They're just trying uh, to be really careful with what they say and not promise anything. I think that's the same I, thing I that I they know, do with the release date and stuff like that. So. But, but what I'm saying more is that I think people would just like to get a bit more insight into what's going on as much as possible, which is why I think that the latest post they made where it said we're going, we're we based on the on the beta and the stress test. We are currently working on these changes. Then it's more like, oh, okay, it's it's easy to relate to that they are that they are making some kind of more or less specific changes than it is to just just silence, you know? Yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. So, so it's not. No, I'm, I'm all fine with them not having the well, fine and fine. I would really be. I would love to be playing the beta weekend, but it's, it's cool that it's going to be a beta weekend and all that. But it, it, it's, it's much more cool when you get a, just a little bit of insight. Yeah. Especially, especially me because you know I'm studying computer science. I love to get a little bit of insight into what's going on inside the game companies. Sure. Uh, but admittedly, it is hard, and as you're saying, yeah, no doubt they haven't. They, they have been trying to get the, the next beta weekend ready, or, or perhaps get a beta ready for this weekend. They've been trying it up until the very last moment, and they've just been having to say, sorry guys, we're, we're going to cut it, we just, we just can't do it. But you're always, you're always hoping, and you know, as um, uh, it, this is a, a blog post that goes back a while, where, where I mean, let's say they have this very iterative way of designing games, which is a normal way to make games that you're doing it iteratively which basically means that you are going to be trying out a lot of stuff. You're going to be implementing a lot of different things and then seeing what works out. And then you have something that works and you're going to try and change it anyways because who knows, perhaps the next, the next perhaps these small changes you're making will actually make the ability be better or will make uh, the UI feel smoother or whatever. You don't know before you've tried it. That's, that's a giant problem, but you just have to try it. and. Uh, that's that's the way of doing it at Arena too. So, you you really don't know that you have the right uh, the right implementation of something before you have tried many implementations of the thing. And perhaps it was your first implementation that was the right one. But that that's iterative game design for you right there. So it's it's so hard to predict to give any kind of estimates when you're doing it like that. And yeah, yeah. I respect them a lot for it because that is the <clears> best way to to make games. I'm I'm convinced of that. But yeah, definitely, definitely. I totally agree with that. Uh, but they can definitely be a bit more open about, about what they're doing. Maybe yeah. it would be cool. And I I, I also think you know. Uh, so we've been participating in the beta, and we have we we noted a few things that were we thought was kind of odd, or we reported some things on the forum or whatnot. You know. And it's it's nice to have them acknowledge some things that, that they they too have have noticed. So now they're just saying, okay, we acknowledge that some of you guys had a had a pretty bad experience because the servers weren't uh, running as smooth as we we expected them to. So we're gonna fix that. Cool, great, thanks. Uh, there's probably a ton of people out there that are sitting that are really happy about that because they didn't have a great experience for the first beta weekend. So I I think it's very nice when they're going out and just acknowledging some problems yeah instead of sticking their head in the sand like uh, like Blizzard has actually done uh, the beginning part of WoW they, they ignored a lot of problems uh, yeah of, of course it's the constant I mean you you have the constant risk that people are going to complain that their their problem was not in this list they made uh, yeah, yeah yeah sure so so I don't there's no way to please everyone I guess no, uh, but but I think a lot of people would be happy to get just a little little bit more insight into what they are doing right now, what the time is is being used on, right? Yeah. On another uh, note, though, they do have these blog posts uh, that they make on ArenaNet site, and they're actually quite enjoyable to read. Yes. Yeah. So, 
this is one of them that recently came up uh, yesterday and uh, they talk about uh, name designing and uh, it's it's actually a really good lead read uh, I'll post the, the link uh, in the description below of course and you know they talk about uh, how they come up with names uh, and in, like they, they look at the environment where the creature comes from and who interacts with the creatures like if it's like a beast then the where does it come from and then maybe mm -hmm. someone in the area hunts that beast and then they base it all like what would what do those people that hunt that creature what would they have called it you know and they really yep. th think about everything uh, related to that and they also talk a bit about pop culture references and how they need to be careful with that because uh, yeah they can be uh... could you Sorry. Um, Skype is being annoying right now annoying I don't have okay any now, now, now you're back thank you <laughs> uh, I couldn't hear what you were saying but yeah, that was a that was a really really cool blog post actually. It's that yeah. that's what I mean. That it's cool to get this kind of insight into what what's oh, yeah. what's going into different aspects of the game. Uh, I loved it, especially yeah, the part. So okay, this animal lives in caves and it lives in the non land, or the non area, whatever. What 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 would they call such a beast, right? And seeing yeah, and the, the iterations they're going through. With and the I, and I love the fact that it's not just a small team. It's like they have all kinds of people that work on the game that like come in with ideas and start brainstorming and then you know they suddenly started talking about poisons and then and then because it was like a red light creature that carried diseases and they really like you know I would really be interested to see how that actually works and it's a, it's a really nice read how they came up with like this beast here for example and I also I love the story about the the char yeah uh, yeah that uh, also has that somewhere you know how they so wanted to find a name. It's in the same blog post. Wanted to find a name for a, a char rogue kind of uh, kind of person. You know, a, a very very dangerous char, but one that was kind of an assassin and lurking in the shadows. Uh, so they they ended up going with um, what was the name again, Ozzy? Do you have it? Yeah, Sisaya uh, Saya disrupted or Shikaya. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And where Caesarea, that was kind of based on, uh, I think it's Sika, which was a, a Roman name for um, a, a, blade. a dagger. Yeah, yeah, an assassin's exactly. blade, yeah. And uh, so how, how things tied together in that way with yeah. some uh, with, with some of the, you know, that they were kind of tied it to, to our culture in that way. Uh, and apparently that's a very normal way to do it, but it's, it's yeah, very interesting blog post. Indeed. Um, next up, uh, we have some more Guild Wars 2 related news. Uh, here we go. Game Breaker TV came up with uh, this. They talk about uh, microtransactions a little bit. I actually didn't get to read this one. I don't know if you, uh, if you got to read it or watch it. Well, it is. Uh, it is just uh, their. You know, um, ArenaNet's uh, direct, uh, what's he called, CEO, I guess. Yeah. Um, who are talking about their, uh, uh, yeah, microtransactions in the game because that's of course always an interesting discussion. Yeah. But yeah, oh, Michael Bryan was his name, uh, Bryan. Uh, and to be honest, as far as I could tell, there wasn't much new in the game. He kind of answered why he thought the game was was worth the the sixty dollar price tag. Which <laughs> was an interesting question to get, but um, but yeah, of course it's a great, it's a big, big, big game, and there will be countless hours of of <laughs> you know playtime in it and ton of different stuff to do. Y so. Yeah, and you pay for the game. It's not like you have mm -hmm. to like he says that the microtransactions are additional things. You don't need them necessarily, so yeah. that's why you pay full price, which totally makes sense. So exactly that that has always been their philosophy. Yeah. Uh, so it's I wouldn't say there's much news in that interview to be honest because no. it is mostly an, an assurance that market transactions they they got it and uh, it's it's not going to be a game breaker in any way. Mm. Um, so n next uh, on Facebook they have this thing going on where they give the spotlight to uh, interesting projects and uh, sites and people that cover Guild Wars 2 and uh, recently they mentioned Project Tyrion. 
which uh, is a very cool uh, concept there this one uh, this guy actually went and looked up all the old uh, Guild Wars 1 areas into Guild Wars 2 and compared them and make screenshots and you can see here like lines arched uh, entrances that are underwater in Guild Wars 2 but they were totally visible in in the first Guild Wars and it's actually really cool to see I they spent a lot of time making this proper like uh, Guild Wars 1 I, I was actually surprised to see some of those pictures I had I had no idea that they were putting so much effort into uh, recreating the original Guild Wars. You can really see the graphics shine as well on Guild Wars, so Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But it's... It's very, very an, cool. An, an insanely cool thing. I mean, one thing is that they're making a game that, that is great for new players for, that, that doesn't know the backstory. But another thing is that players from Guild Wars 1 can actually go in there and, you know, have these, oh, I know this place kind of moments, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I I love it, and well, of course it makes sense that they're doing it that way. But it must be amazing to be a Guild Wars One player who's going to try out Guild Wars Two and then go in there and be like, "Oh right, yeah, I see," and you know, going to Lion's Arch and just seeing how that city has fallen, if you will, and and being rebuilt uh, as as this big <laughs> ship city. Uh, I don't know. I I, I kind of love this feeling also because. You you're seeing how the artists are just they're, they're just I, I guess they've been getting more or less free hands to just go crazy on this new world just to to you know they've been allowed to sit down and rework their their entire world just go like that's, that's all right how, be how really, will this really cool yeah like yeah how will this look 200 years from now mm. wow this is okay so this city is sunk to the ocean and and this thing has been rebuilt to be some kind of huge bastion or whatever I, I don't know it's, yeah, I, I, I love it. That's really cool. It almost mo makes me want to go back to uh, Guild Wars 1 and just play through that to see some of those moments, or see some of those areas. Yeah, actually, really, I uh, was thinking as well, but I don't have the energy or time to do that. <laughs> so next, uh, we're going to talk a bit about uh, the community. Uh, Rina and Anette have had some blog posts about this before, and also the Facebook pages that we saw uh, earlier. Uh, they think building a new community is... I mean, it's the most important part of an MMO, right? To have a, a good community, and uh, yeah. some some communities are not as good as the others. Um, especially in like World of Warcraft, the community has gone a bit downhill. I mean, the individual communities within the guilds are usually really good, but towards each other, like with random dungeons and stuff, that community is just completely gone. Like when you're leveling, or you know. Yeah, people yeah. The the server communities and stuff and are completely gone. It's just like uh, I I've seen that community. I mean, for the first year or two were amazing. Yeah, Vanilla WoW and even early Burning Crusade mm -hmm. were actually really good. Uh, but it went downhill from there, and especially when they brought in cross realms from Radalus King. Yeah, exactly. That's when it when it really started to to go downhill. I mean, it it made it easier to be a. a, a progression game but but kind of removed some of the social aspect of it but um but yeah let's not make this into a world of warcraft podcast so uh, no but it is important like what 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 makes a community important mm, right? right like how yeah. how does it work because in world of warcraft what made the community so successful was just because you know leveling took a long time and it was hard most of the time so you had to like group up with people and like you know met good players in dungeons because it lasts long and friendly players you meant along because you know you spent time with them whereas later on it watered down in World of Warcraft and then just became like this button like click I'm gonna do this and then you go through it without talking to anyone and yeah and th that's why the community easy. went that's why the community went downhill and then but now well, when you also yeah I actually think I actually think that's a lot to it but yeah definitely the dungeon things and uh, probably because dungeons were getting more something as well. yeah, yeah they were getting more something that you just wanted to get done with really fast uh, instead of actually being some kind of adventure you were going out to where where you knew you were going into something really really far uh, really, really fast something really really difficult the dungeons were going to be difficult and you'd have to really coordinate and, and be good and stuff to get through it and you would probably wipe it was just the way of it 
So you go in there and you'll have to coordinate, you'll have to talk with people and stuff. And so when you die, and, and you'll, you'll, you know, have some time to just talk and, and relax a bit. And when you met good, met good players, you would be teaming up with them and stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because you usually tend, you spend like a good hour to get a group together at least. Yeah. And then you go in and it could fail really fast, but the good players would often stay, and the nice players, and then you you build from there. Your friend list build up and the groups w eventually get faster to make because you got into this, you know, group and guilds as well, they were so much bigger back then as well, so there was more room for, for socialization, I guess, uh, and socializing. You, you would, yeah, you, you'd have to be more patient just because things took longer time, so but you'd, not, not only you'd, that, have to, you'd have to talk more with people and just, you know, find things to, to fill in your all the spare time with. Yeah, but also... Uh, guilds guilt towards each other were a lot nicer back in the day. Uh, you know, people asked what each other's progress were. There was, you know, rivalry, of course, but it was a lot more friendly in the sense that I don't know, people I helped each other a bit more. And you know, I knew I knew a lot of people from other guilds as well that I just often grouped with and yeah. and, and just knew. You know, it wasn't like oh my god, you guys suck. And it's like especially it, in Brother Lich King, that became really horrible. That rivalry, like my guild is the best and you guys suck at the kind of thing, I really. Look. I also think it was, you know, the, the, the best guys in Vanilla Vow, they were insanely good, they were doing all the hardest dungeons and a lot of other guilds would just kind of be doing, would be a couple of, of t uh, tiers behind mm. um, in progression and so it, it wouldn't be as much of a competition, it would just be more of an, <laughs> a steady exploration, right, you were doing and, and you you weren't you weren't rushing to get anywhere because there was so so such a long way to the the top and you wouldn't be able to actually get up. There. So you just have to do it in in whatever pace suited you. And yeah. Uh, I had some other point. Yeah, of course you had to be in a guild to actually get anywhere, at least in the PvE side of things. There wasn't any raid finder and there wasn't really uh, puck groups in that matter. So people who were serious about the the game would be in a guild, of course, and. Yeah, and and you know have to have to socialize there. There wasn't, there wouldn't be any lone wolf kind of gameplay actually. No, but guilds were also big because you know you had like the hardcore raiders, but those raiders often had like friends in guilds and alts, and it was a lot more social social than it is now. Where if you if you have a ten man raiding guild, it's usually like you have ten raiders in the guild and maybe like five to ten friends, and there's like ten to twenty people line at most, and ten of those people yeah. will be raiding. And not talking at all, and the other ten are just, you know, leveling. And leveling is generally I, a solo thing that, these days. Yeah, yeah, I think it depends. I mean, you you can you can easily have a very very good uh, ten man guild, no doubt about it. But of course, when you had a forty man guild, there would be a. So if you say that just fifty percent of the people in your guild is is uh, friendly and and very social, then of course you'll have more friendly and social people in a forty man guild than in a ten man guild. If this, you know, if it's the same percentage of the players that are. That are nice. So, yeah. Uh, and that way, yeah. Um, let me just say real quick, get this out of the way, that I remember how horrible Vanilla Vow was in many aspects. But when it comes to the social part, I really think it was the, it was the Best. time where I had the most fun. Yeah. But I think the most, the key points there were just that the content was hard. Mhm. Mm so it 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 required people to look for each other and you know play together. And it guilds work, guilds were kind of big. That was also the thing that helped. And every, every, everything was server wide. That it was not yeah. cross realm. And I think that's also very important. And I think that's what Guild Wars do is capturing because a lot of the events are going to be, you know, group based. You need to work together in order to get things done. And you don't have to group. So there's no mob tagging. There's no, you know, stealing loot, uh, whatever. Everything works towards team play. And I think that's, you know, that's what they're going for. And that's also what they say in like these articles that they talk about uh, building a community mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really important uh, those things for for people well I, I think okay so we have the we have the, the fact which I really like that everyone on the server is on the same side and is working towards the same goal and you have this world was world going on at all times and you can always look up the statistics for the world was world to see how your team is uh, how your realm is doing I yeah. think that is awesome nothing short of awesome uh, I think they'll do a whole lot to create community on that server because you always have this common goal to work against or towards. It's called, um, yeah. 
so that 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 is that's great. Um, regarding the dynamic events, I actually didn't notice that much, you know, talk going on there. It was more like it was cooperative play. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was. Um, but I wouldn't say it was social play. No, but I, I it's, it's also hard, right? Because there are several aspects. One, these were pretty easy events. Two, this was a beta weekend event, so I didn't even bother keep talking to people and getting to know them because you know they will pro you'll probably never see them again. But I can see like in higher areas where things get harder, and yeah. you suddenly start meeting the same people. Uh, I definitely had that in Rift as well, where you know you see the same people and then you start talking and you start doing things together. And in I, that that regard, it will be more social. But it's it's true, like you say, it, it's it can also turn out to be like go do somewhere and walk away again and not not talk to anyone at all. Uh, I actually think it it might work in smaller scale dynamic events. I mean, I, I were so I was just running into a dungeon and that turned uh, not dungeon, you know, uh, a cave and that turned out to be rather difficult. But then this hunter guy showed up and we were just starting to progress in that together. And we weren't actually talking with each other, but we were working together, and it still gave a, a pretty good feeling. Yeah. But what I were what I were lacking was a good way to communicate with people. I don't know. I had I had a ton of problem that I couldn't whisper people probably in the beta. It, it be. didn't really work out for me, I'd, I'd, and there I'd, wasn't any speech bubbles or anything, so no. you couldn't make this. You couldn't have this little conversation going with no, people. No, it was only general city. general chat. Yeah. Yeah, and th that just doesn't work for a dynamic event. Uh, they need to have some kind of system w with with which you can communicate with the people right around you. Maybe they should ha have. They should have do two things. I think they should one, make those speech bubbles because I mean any MMO needs to have that where you talk within 20 yards or 15 yards or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and second, maybe they when they make a dynamic event, they should have a dynamic event chat, which is like a chat based around 50 yards around that event or something like that. That's not actually a bad idea at all. You know, it be, you, I mean, probably you, you can be in 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 uh, you know the vicinity of of multiple different dynamic events, but perhaps if you could kind of like select which event you wanted to take part in, if you will. I mean, well, it's just like or perhaps it, you're just joining it, in the chat it, on the it, one that's if closest. You, if you are close to an event, right, it will not necessarily pop up on your screen. If you are close enough, then it will pop up. Yeah. Uh, and maybe then that's what triggers that chat. You know. And then when you walk out of it, you leave the chat automatically. That that might be. Yeah, I idea. could see that working. So you'll be like trying to try to fight some ops and just realize shit, I can't do this on my own. And just write in the chat. Um, anybody around here? Because you know that it's only people around in the in that event that that can see the chat. Yeah. And perhaps there'll be a couple of guys. Yeah, we are standing over here by the by the tree line. Uh, you can just come and team up with us. I think, yeah. yeah, stuff stuff like that. Just make it make it so you can easily interact with the people doing the same di uh, the event as you are doing. Yeah. Um, because they already they had the group chat for for dungeons. That's all fine. That's an entirely different thing because you actually you actually get to pick the people you're going with. Mm -hmm. But in the dynamic event, I really I would really love to have the social aspect be a part of it. Yeah. Instead of just having it to be a collaborative play, because collaborative play that worked that worked out all right. I mean, I saw people uh, healing, I saw people resting, I saw uh, some people, you know, using their um, defensive uh, abilities. Not not a lot of people, but I think it will come once once you learn the class and stuff. Uh, Profession. But but. Uh, oh, I'm oh that that. <laughs> After all these many weeks. Uh, yeah, but, but definitely chat is an important part of that. But at there they're going at least they're going the right way. They keep everything server wide and server pride is gonna be big with, with World vs World and uh Yeah. I really hope that they will not make a dungeon fighter or if if they make one that it's just gonna be on one server and not. Because it would be kinda weird to suddenly team up with people from other servers. Yeah, that, I mean you can already visit other servers, you could probably make that argument. And and I wouldn't. I, I guess you can also team up with. I mean, if you're being invited to another server as a friend, you can probably team up with guys there and go in a dungeon. That's mm. all fine. Yes, I, but can I, definitely I think that. that. I think that's a better way of doing it than having a yeah a dungeon kind of. Let's let's just wait with that. Just give it some time and see if we can get it to work well, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing though is uh, the the raid groups in the in the world versus world. Mm. Which is. We didn't get. I actually didn't. Mm, okay, so last uh, in the during the stress test, I noticed this guy who were marked on the map as a raid leader, or I think it was kind of ra raid leader-ish, a person. 
And we yeah, were what do they call it him. again? I can't remember what they called. Captain. Exactly. I, I, yeah. He was marked as being a leader of some kind of group, right? Whatever, within the world was well. Mm -hmm. And we were going for him. And sadly, I never really figured out how we could join him and stuff. But the idea is that you can make your own, uh, your own like raid teams within the world was well. And people can just join you. And there'll be a chat available with which only you can write in. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are able to... Well, pe people can join it voluntarily, and you will then be able to give orders. I mean, of course, you're not sure that people will follow those orders, but hopefully, since they joined you, they might actually you know, want to listen to you. I think that's another great way to create some kind of community on the servers, because if, if you have some really dedicated uh, World vs. World or PvPers on the server that are having uh, some good raid groups, you might actually see people coming from different and places guilds, to try yeah. and team up with them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, I actually, I actually, I actually believe that they're gonna implement that system in PVE as well. I think they talked about that, 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 mm. that, that they wanna implement something like that in the PVE that, side that as well. That could work. That could work. I mean, I remember back in uh, that, that's World of Warcraft again, right? But back in Manila when I was doing a lot of PvP, I would be going into the battleground, and back then you wouldn't be put into a group automatically. You'd just be fighting. Everyone uh, would be fighting for himself. Invite me. Invite but, uh, Exactly, but then I would be going in there, and, and sometimes people were asking for an invite, but I would just go in, make a raid group like this, and just saying, whisper me for invite, and people would be doing that. And I, I'd be having these, almost almost everyone in a battleground will always be in my raid group. Mm -hmm. And then when it started, I'll be like, okay, team one is going back, uh, is going down there to the mine, team two to the blacksmith, team three to the lumber mill. Protect the, protect the flags from reporting comings. And we would do it, and we would fucking own the, <laughs> own the enemy. I mean, we would, we would win it. Yeah. Because we were organized, and you know, and that was a great way. You would also gain friends like that because people would be going like, "Wow, this is really cool," or "Good job," or "Yeah, we are." I mean, people would be talking together and be having a good time because you were actually playing somewhat organized. Yeah. So chat, uh, chat is a huge part of that. Uh, mm. Then they, the arena talks a bit about uh, uh, community on like sites, like community sites and forums and Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. Uh, uh, yes. What, what do you stand on that? Do you, do you think that's important to have like an official site, or do you think it's better to have fan and fan sites and Facebook? It because is. personally, I never use like in World of Warcraft, I've never used the official forum like for anything other than maybe look at some issues or stuff like that. I never really did any guild recruitment there or looked any for any recruitment. Uh, I never really used it. The only way I actually kind of like having Facebook now. Uh, with Guild Wars, you know, following them there. I mean, that's, that's the only mm -hmm. thing. But I don't, I won't miss, miss. Uh, I guess an official form right now is nice to have because the feedback, and I actually have been using it myself for feedback as well to give them feedback, and and that that's kind of nice. But other than that, I don't really care f that much for it. I don't know what you uh, think about stuff like that. Uh, I agree that the WoW forums aren't a particularly good place to be, but that goes for most World of Warcraft related forums, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, firstly, I like the forums in the way that I know what I post there is going to be read by a community manager, and my concerns in that way is going to be taken seriously. True. If I present them in a serious manner, of course. Yeah. Uh, also, I like that developers are sometimes getting out there with news, and I like it's, it as a way where you are pretty sure there are there'll be some kind of communication. It's important that that of course for Blizzard to use it as a as a place to communicate with their fans in different ways, and they're doing it all the time. Especially uh, the beta forums, you'll notice there's a ton of communication going on. Mm. Um, and I think I think that's really important because that's kind of going back to the whole Facebook thing. Yeah. I think people are more happy when they feel like they're, you know, getting some information about what's going on. So in that way, I think the forums are really important. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll return to the forums in a bit. Uh, Facebook, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing a great, great job on Facebook right now with a, uh, you know, a selection of uh, interesting information and links to blog posts and links to other websites and stuff like that. That's that's great. Uh, I like it. I'm actually I'm also following you know, Battlefield 3 on um, on Facebook, and they're doing kind of the same thing where they are like every day they're posting a new video or link to some site or whatever, uh, a couple of times a day even. And they're just so that that's just the their way of you know bringing the community closer to the community, if you will, because they're kind of just giving people links to what's going on all yeah. the on the internet. Yeah, I, I think I, that's 
what Guild Wars or Arena is doing really well as well now, like they get, give a spotlight to a lot of people that have like fan sites. Uh, I've never seen Blizzard do anything like that before. Not not that much. I mean, Blizzard no. are definitely working together with their fan sites, but I agree that we're not. I'm not kind of seeing it the same way. Not not nearly as much. No. I, I hope that the philosophy that they have for the community that that will stay that way. I mean, the whole game is built around working together, whereas World of Warcraft turned into this, you know, mob stealing and you know, quickly mine, quickly stop attacking a mob because you see a mine in the instance and you st yeah. start walking away. And that whole game is kind of hostile when it comes to that. So you you see that being reflected into forum posts and stuff like that. People are very hostile towards each other, like elitist and you know I'm better than you. And I hope that Guild Wars 2. I mean, those people will always be there, but I really hope that ArenaNet manages to to keep it a bit more clean. And I hope that people will adapt towards the playstyle and keep it more friendly uh, because uh, that's probably the thing that that's you know keeps me away from the official forums the most that kind of stuff that that they're so hostile and stuff like that yeah um yeah definitely i mean if you have to go back to vanilla real quick i actually think that's also the way the community has has moved over time because the the forums were a lot better back in mm. in vanilla more more helpful and stuff um but actually, what I'd like to see would be some pretty heav heavy modified, heavily, um, not modified, moderated, moderated is the word, <laughs> uh, mod moderated forums. Um, because the places where I personally like to hang out is stuff like uh, Elitist Jerks, um, Arena Junkies somewhat that's not as clean as, uh, as Elitist Jerks, and there's something called Synthic for Battlefield 3. Which is uh, kind of the same thing, very heavily moderated. So serious forums. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. to be honest, I don't think, I don't think it's it's a bad idea for a game developer to have some heavily moderated forums where people can are only allowed to post if they are actually acting properly towards. Definitely, their, definitely. Uh, I I would be much more keen to use the forum. If if I wouldn't wouldn't be getting uh, you know insulted because of my opinion, or if I my post wouldn't be you know buried under ten troll flame posts, whatever. Yeah, I think it must be very annoying for for Blizzard as well. Like those same posts over and over, but but people like you know, oh this sucks, oh that sucks, oh, and not giving any constructive criticism like. Lol, like like lol, rogues get a buff and shamans don't get any again or something like that. You know, you see that those kind yeah. of posts all completely, the time. Completely useless. Yeah, completely useless. And, uh, and we have already seen we already seen the guild war community, you know, go towards this <laughs> this uh, you know uh, hostile behavior, which is what we talked about earlier with the with the second post on the Facebook page, right? Yes. But they were trying to tone that down. So I I really hope there'll be. Yeah, yeah, I I, 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 w I would say right, you know, because there are a lot of good people on that for that Facebook page as well that you know I regularly yeah, nice. post with, but uh, it's the bad part is about that people that are negative shine through so much more than the mm -hmm. positive ones. Uh, that's that's a problem. And you always talk about the silent ma uh, majority, which I I'm a part of that personally. Uh, yeah, me too, me too. I I don't enjoy to post a place where the the tone is very hostile or where I'm pretty sure that nothing cool will come from. I mean, perhaps some developer will read a constructive post, but it's not cool to be posting anything constructive when people are just trolling you. Yeah, like often in WoW posts, the things turn into the same goddamn discussion every time, and it does, yeah. it's like WoW sucks. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, but Rift this. Blah blah blah. blah. It's like, who fuck cares? We're here to talk about this, and not not that. Exactly. I just I just wanted to talk about this. Keep on topic or stay out. Yeah. So if Arena, I I hope ArenaNet will I will actually be taking the the forum seriously, as a, a place of communication between uh, developers and fans, and be doing some heavy moderation on it, just to say. Guys, we want to have a good community here. We want a, to, this to be a place where people can come and they can talk about, you know, they can talk with each other or they can come with suggestions or feedback or you know, it, ask for and help it, and all that. If you don't have any contractors to say, then just don't say anything. You don't have to reply to something. I mean, God, yeah. people are getting so bad with that kind of stuff. So like, but I guess it's that anonymity with the internet. Did I just say def it? Definitely. Anonymity. <laughs> 
gosh. Ah, you're not you're not making me say it. But uh, yeah, that comes to that. People feel you know, who I can say this and nobody yeah, exactly. can do anything about it. But I am secret behind my IP address. You suck. E. Oh, mom, look what I just said. <laughs> but yeah. Um, the sad part is, it's not even kids only. It's like adults. No, 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 same no. thing. That's that's. The question is though, can can they? Do you think it's fair if ArenaNet makes a forum that is is very heavily moderated? So, perhaps a lot of people will. I mean, you risk banning a lot of people that might actually have something on their, uh, you know, they want to say, but perhaps have a have a hard a time actually expressing themselves. Oh, or like that, a bad yeah. day or whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's true. How, but how I guess. Just, like, uh, What's that the best way to go around that? You just need good moderators, I guess. Uh, temporary bands, maybe. I don't know. Not, don't make permanent. Mm -hmm. Have some bands, so you have kind of a. Uh, you you can perhaps get e either bands or what's it called warnings, and they will warnings. Yeah. They they'll be removed over time if you don't if you don't do anything stupid again within a couple of months time. Perhaps the warning will be removed. So. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I I just I'd love to have a a forum where I feel <laughs> where I feel I can go and uh, you know an official forum for where information like and for information for, for discussion. For, yeah. yeah. We, and, and where the developers will go too, because I also think it's pretty important that the developers stop by from time to time and actually give some input or whatever. They, they have actually been pretty active on the the beta, so I really hope they continue that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Exactly. Usually, beta is a bit different from when the when the game goes live, but I hope they will keep that up because it it also means. I mean, if if you know that the developers are actually active there, I think there's a bigger chance that people will stop by and give some input. The the biggest problem with with forums and also Facebook is that people fail to do research themselves first. They 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 don't read. They don't look for something before they ask something. You sh often. On official forums and also on the Facebook page, people say the exact same thing that the other ten people below them all also said. Like, when is the beta? Is there going to be a beta this weekend? Or mm -hmm. like the same on the support forum. You like to see the same problems over and over. What's the point in that? Why don't people look, search the forum first before you do it? You know, and if it's not on the first ten pages, maybe bring it back up again or something like that. But don't don't post it again it's no point in posting it again you're not going to be hurt faster it's just annoying for everyone else yeah 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 exactly so um i don't know it's a tough position to be in especially because most of the people who are actually on the forums and being very uh very vocal about some problems are just fans who are really really uh, passive Mm. Not passive, uh, passionate, passionate. <laughs> My God, I'm doing bad in English today. Uh, very passionate about something. Uh, so it it must suck to have to you know ban players who probably really love the game but just have a really hard time expressing themselves. Yeah, but, but I guess that's but just, I, you can that's see the, the difference between between people not being able to express themselves. Probably. probably. And yeah. also, I don't. I I would really like generally that people are better to. That there was some more consequences for being a jerk on the internet, so perhaps people would, you know, the over the overall quality across all uh, posts, uh, all forums on the internet would increase. That it's would it's also the community itself that needs to uh, have responsible for that, responsibility for that because what you see on the the Facebook posts often that people that want to keep it positive often reply and in Guild Wars 2. Facebook, it has ha actually happened a lot where someone did something negative, and then people, you know, responded in a very normal manner below, trying mm -hmm. to do that, and that has worked pretty well actually so far. But this yeah. it doesn't stop from people posting the same thing over and over again, and that's kind of quite annoying. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to be going with the, uh, how the forums will be working out in the end, at least. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, just keep keep it up with the Facebook and the Twitter. Uh, the Twitter isn't that that active actually, but I love the I love the Facebook page. Yeah. So um, let's move on to our next topic of the evening, the last topic. And the last topic of the evening, I the warrior. So oh, this warrior. week's special uh, is going to be the warrior. Um, warriors are mas masters of martial skills. 
They rely on speed, strength, toughness, and heavy armor to survive. They are versatile in combat and benefit from offensive de and defensive skills. Warriors inspire allies and demoralize enemies. The soldier profession, warriors wear heavy armor. So, yeah, uh, the weapons. Warrior has by far the most total combination of weapons in game. Mm hmm, yeah. It is kind of nuts. They can almost use everything. It is actually insane how much uh, they can, how much weapon they can use, especially that they can use ranged weapons. That was kind of surprising to me. Every class can use ranged and melee. That that's probably the coolest thing about this game. But uh, I mean, I I have some uh, footage of me. Uh, I'll show that here. I've recently put this up. I put a description in the description as well. But you uh, you'll see me go through uh, the sword and the ranged uh, often. And you know, you don't even have to do that, you can also have like, ooh, I'm gonna have a 200 hammer and a 200 sword, or a 200 sword and one and sword and a shield for more defense or something like that. You don't have to have that ranged weapon. But no, 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 of course not. But uh, I found it interesting that that was, <coughs> that, that the warrior, I mean the warrior is usually the, the melee guy, if anyone is, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and mostly, and mostly like heavy armor, maybe with robust, uh, Kind of character, yeah. yeah another they they're going like, eh, you'll just give them a bow and a. And a but it makes sense in itself. real life. Warriors get bows and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> in real life, warriors get uh, <laughs> get get, ra get rifles mostly nowadays. <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, but but yeah yeah I'm not I'm not it's not it's not a complaint. It was just a kind of one of one of the places where I really could see that their design philosophy regarding uh, that they're not regarding afraid. Were very different. They're not afraid to like. You know, we're gonna give these. Why not give them a bow? Because in World of Warcraft, for example, you can use a bow, but it's just a pull. Like you have one ability with your bow, and that's it. And you don't ever use it except for pulling something. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> it it's kind of cool that they say, like, you know what? You're getting a gun and a bow, and you get five full skills for it. They did. Uh, now you you have been playing the warrior for a bit, as you said. Um, yeah. How did it? How did it feel? Generally, not not just the ranged combat, but also the melee. How did the no? So the melee combat has an advantage over the fact that it does more damage in range. I've read, uh, but it also has, it's harder to play because you know there are a lot of attacks that are close range and you need to dodge away. But and I've had people heard complaints about it, but, but I I freaking loved it. I especially with my greatsword, you have like two charge abilities, and you know you just go in do some big damage, you dodge out again and then you charge back in again and then you know, you roll back out again, you switch your ranged weapon, blah blah blah, and then you charge back in with your melee weapon and it once, you, once you get used to that it actually feels really really good to do that. It looked insanely fun in the video, how you were like, okay now I've got some HP, now I'm just jumping in there with my sword and going crazy and um, and then when, uh, when when you were getting kind of pressed again, you would jump back out with your ranged weapon. Yeah, exactly. But did, did it feel, what felt best, the ranged or the, or the melee weapon? Because I was kind of wondering if it, if you can stay out of danger very well with the ranged weapon, why even use the melee weapon? Well, the melee weapon does more damage and you have a bit more control with it, I think. Uh, well, you just basically do more damage and you just, yeah, I think the, the best players, like, you can, yes, you can play safe and ranged, but really good players will do both and you know stun them and then charge in and then slow them and do extra damage burn body debuffs and then get your damage going and then dodge back out again and stuff like that but as regard to what what i liked best i think i think the combination of both is what i liked best is not being confined to because i hate being just a melee guy but i, I loved it in this game because i could switch to my ranged weapon if i needed to and it, it just felt good, but I think my favorite weapon is probably the gun or the bow. But I also it felt I, that good. It also liked I also liked the sword, and I also liked the <laughs> hammer, and I also liked the, <laughs> also, yeah. and I, you know, and I never really tried doing an axis, uh, two one axis, and then we went into BV and I got that, and you get like this crazy whirlwind, and it's like what the fuck, this is really cool. Awesome. But especially like with the shield as well, you get like this ability that you, you stand like this with your shield for three seconds and you block every incoming attack and it, yeah. it I don't know, it felt really good to do that as well. But I think the biggest, uh, the coolest thing is that every weapon has some sort of thing 
that will help like a charge or defensive and everything is just very viable i think that i think that that's what i like the most okay yeah that that is good if everything that's that's actually the most important that everything feels viable because um so and, i read a and man the gun sound in this game sounds so freaking awesome yeah, I noticed it. The the gun. I didn't actually try and play play a uh, race with the gun, but it's it sounded and they looks they look awesome. It's like they hired the dudes from Battlefield to do that. Or something. <laughs> so guys, you have been doing some modern warfare style. Uh, can you just go back in time a bit, some 1600-ish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th they sounded very very cool. Yeah, it's very nice. But I I I, I, I read somewhere that you know warrior is kind of. So each each weapon combination you're using are supposed to feel quite unique in in the way it plays and the way you're going to play with it. Like the 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 swords was more like okay you're going to be going a bit in on the enemy, put some bleeds on them, and then back off. Uh, yeah, the and you get were very you much get, building you get, like, up this ch charge and, uh, and and bleed for swords, and then uh, the the two-handed hammer is more like uh, you know hard smash attacks that like cripples them and slows them, stuns them, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the bow is more for like a AOE range. type <laughs> a range yeah. and AOE, whereas the gun is more single target, uh, but it like stuns and blows away and like vulnerability. Uh, one handed sword is also bleeding and then shield obviously for defense. And two handed axis is more like I don't know. I've never really looked into it that much, but it seems to be a bit like just going crazy with whirlwinds because you have like two whirlwind attacks but build, uh, build adrenaline and then uh, then burn it yeah could you could you real quick so adrenaline is is the special thing about the warrior right right it's the the bar on top of your five skills that uh fills up and you get three different bars you can do an attack on one when one first one's filled second one or third and it, of course it gets more powerful along the way but it's basically just an extra attack uh that does a lot of damage and uh, with every every weapon it's different so that's kind of cool like like here you should just see me do it now with bow i leave like a big giant thing of fire on the ground and when you shoot through it with your arrow the, your arrows catch fire and you do fire damage <laughs> which oh yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how many combinations there are of that stuff because genius. that's good really yeah, yeah. Th that could actually play out a uh, play a pretty big role in it but yeah very different play styles definitely uh, if you want something that can do a lot then warriors definitely want to try out. It's uh, a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with it actually. So I, I think I'll be trying the warrior. I'd actually kind of expected it to be a rather boring class, if you will. But yeah, it yeah, yeah. Seemed like it. Uh, also noticed that that warriors had kind of like stances in this. Uh, it seems to be the warrior thing for many games that they have a stance. A stance. Yeah, it's a, a skill type apparently. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, it was just uh, just on the on the wiki that uh, you could go into um, to different stances. I think you can find it in the as an extra ability or uh, the extra extra utility skill that you can have some berserker stance. Oh, uh, that that probably I've never really gotten into this, so uh, I don't know. Uh, it's something you yeah, of course that that's something you'll be looking more at the more uh, skill points you're getting, of course, in the game, but. It is it is basically just uh, different uh, utilities things that, that you do more. Um, well, you have stuff like the balance stance, which means that you can't be knocked back or knocked down or anything like that. Uh, but circle stance means you gain some adrenaline and stuff like that. So uh, I, I just can, I, I can actually look at the skill tool here for a second and see. Uh, look a bit at that. Oh, I'm clicking wrong here. Um, right. Utility skills. You should see if a few there. Stamp. Banner strength. I will avenge you. Fear me. Bulls charge. <laughs> yeah, that looks sounds cool. Yeah, there are a lot of cool uh, things. Oh man, I, I actually I gotta try the warrior for sure. Signet, uh, signet is like. Gain adrenaline, signet of might. I, I think that's what it is. Or balance stance, you gain stability. Signet of might, passive, increase power, you gain might. 
Yeah, that's just something to do with the boons they are applying, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's just it, that, that most classes can apply most, most boons in the game. Rampage. Sickness rage. Oh, the Rampage is actually really cool. You, like, get into the Juggernaut and you, you basically become, like, this melee guy with your hands. And you <laughs> get five abilities based on that, and it's, it's quite a nuts, like, the fast movement. It seems like I had, I had that too as, um... As a guardian, you know mm -hmm. those elite skills. They are very impressive, and I love that. Okay, this one skill opens up a whole new variety of abilities for you. Wait, what? I thought I had. Okay, cool. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta learn those. So all the melee weapons in the game seem to have a chain attack in the f on the first one. Mhm. Mm so you do like this attack, and there's a bleeding, and then you do more bleed, and then. You strike your throw with the finish of farming first, so that's kind of interesting for our DPS, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's mm, a, w a ways to, you know, what you want to do is probably what you want to get all three strikes off because the last one is is uh, usually the the most powerful of them. Yeah. So you want to build that up, get those three going, and and then you can, you know, use your other abilities that have gone off cooldown. Meanwhile. Yeah. Exactly. But probably also because it, it means you can be a bit tactical about it. You can just you're gonna fire off the first two swings and where you're gonna place the last swings because if the last swing is, is something that's gonna hit multiple enemies, like some kind of cleave attack, then you might be, you know, wanting to hold it up just a little bit and then using it while you move over over there where the enemies is, right? Yeah. Um and of course it also just looks more awesome that you doesn't you're not just hacking away, you're actually doing <laughs> you're doing this hack and then you're doing this hack and then you're doing the big hack in the end, right? It, it it looks more uh, dynamic yeah. than just having the same animation all over the place. Mm, definitely. Uh, but but I think it's a cool idea, and you have to you have to be a bit careful because if you're building up the two, doing the first two attacks, and then you're using some other ability, you're actually breaking the chain. So you really need to to be a bit uh, careful. So the profession specific uh, attribute is brawn. Increases the burst skill damage. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. What is a burst uh, skill? The, the, the burst skill is what you, you use when you're filled up with your adrenaline bar. Right. Alright, that makes sense. They're all related to that, it seems. To yeah, exactly. So, it, I, I guess it makes sense. If I just hope they have made all the you know special abilities for each class, made the, um, each profession, damn it, mm -hmm. made, made them, you know... Uh, interesting enough, appealing enough, mm -hmm. uh, so you actually want to go for this extra stat you have. Yeah. Um, but I also think it, it makes it makes sense to have this one extra stat, you know, affect this one thing that makes your class very unique. Yeah. And it, it, it definitely seems to be something that, uh, well, more games, uh, at least World of Warcraft is also trying to go get on that wagon where there's something very unique to each class uh, that 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 makes it uh, stand out in some way. It's not just regular buttons. Sometimes you have this extra energy or resource or whatever you have to manage, or some extra special abilities or whatever it is. Uh, and I th I think it's a very great idea. Yeah, definitely. This is interesting. Regenerates your health based on adrenaline level. Oh, not bad. Some very tactical uh, abilities uh, to this game. But that, yeah, that's just the same with all the utility skills. At least I am so looking forward to getting down in for real and having the time to actually dig down into some of those skills and just s putting together the best spec for whatever I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Because there's there's so many ways you can use them and combine them and stuff. So. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that's that's pretty much. All I have about the warrior right now. You're uh, going to be uh, playing it more for the next uh, bit of again? No, but I'm gonna start over. I think I'm gonna either mesmer or I think I'm actually going with uh, a necromancer just because it looks cool. It's probably gonna blow my mind as okay. well. Just as <laughs> something else. I hope they're gonna stop doing that at some point. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? It's it's, it's it's not they're not so far they haven't made it any easier to pick a class, a profession. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I, I like the warriors. I, I just tried it because 
you know, I'm just gonna try it. Why not? And, uh, because it was probably my least interesting character, but I, I was now on my top three list of wanting to play. I think so. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. All right. I w when is the next party weekend? You think? <laughs> uh, to be honest, it could it, if next they get the weekend if they get or the hardware up and running. I could seeing it be next weekend. Both, I, I think I don't think they're feeling very good about postponing the one they they probably should have had this weekend. Um, and if they if the hardware uh, upgrades are going well, I could imagine it be next weekend. Next weekend. Yeah. Also, the outcry from the community is definitely not going to be smaller as the weeks go by. Um. The true question is still when the, when they're going to release the game, but to be honest, it sounds like they're still planning to have more than just w one additional beta weekend. So, I'm 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 guessing we we won't see the game until August earliest. Still, I'll just, uh, I'm just showing you this. Well, you know, as I just wrote you, I can't see anything. Oh. <laughs> the it's Skype is Skype is a little bit broken right now, so all I'm seeing is a is a frame that's like 30 minutes old now. Ah, that's weird. Can I just yeah. turn it off for a second? Sure, sure thing. Hey, we're back. When it's ready. <laughs> Hi, exactly. <laughs> that, <laughs> that that is that when the game is going to come out for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and I mean that that's the philosophy, and it's the same blog post that talks about this iterative iterative uh, game design philosophy they're going. Yeah. And to be honest, ArenaNet, take the time you you need to. Uh, I remember, to we don't hold things back according to some sinister master schedule to intentionally tease our fans, or for any of the other malicious purposes that I've been seen that I've seen Bandai. Bandied, mm -hmm. bandied about various forms. Yeah, they are and saying that. That's what that, people that need to learn. That mean one thing. <laughs> ArenaNet is actually doing something. They are making yeah, the game. The game is not done yet. Well, it's done, but they're bug fixing and you know fixing the last things, changing things. Unlike other previous games that have had beta tests before, so. I just, I just. It's refreshing to see, and I hope they stick to their guns. I just hope they know how to kind of restrict themselves, because the the risk of having this iterative game design is that you just keep keep going, that you don't, you have to stop at, at some the, point. At the end of 2012, sorry, we revamped the whole game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no graphics design. So you know this whole action uh, combat thing, it's not gonna work out. We're no. going back to you know hot bars and targeting, and you know. Holy all Trinity. The like, really. <laughs> we gotta reinvent the Holy Trinity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so we tried this out for a couple of years. Not gonna work out, guys. Sorry. No, but uh, uh, it's it's all fine. Just the, they need to know when to stop as well. Uh, but of course, if if the problem is is hardware based, then fix it. We don't want another uh, Di Diablo three or uh, anything like that. We, we it would be a blast to. What? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does that annoy you? <laughs> Damn you, OZ. Right. But, uh, okay. yeah. One day I'm going to host this show and you won't like it one bit. No. Heed my warning. You're a warrior. You have a helmet with horns. <laughs> I'm a Viking. <laughs> God damn it, I'm a Dane. A Dane. Uh, whatever. Scandinavians, yeah. all the same. That's just because you want to be one of us, but you aren't, Dozy. I am a Dane and you are not. All right. Yes. Well, that's that's about it for all this episode, I guess. Next week, hopefully, we get some more information from our lovely people at ArenaNet. Um, I hope so. Uh, would, would be nice to have a, another bit of a game to look forward to. Yes. We'll, of course, be... Sure to uh, to mention it. Footage. Happens to be uh, be a beta weekend. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. For sure. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, check our Facebook page, Twitter page, and like yeah. or dislike this video. And be sure to give us a comment below and uh, tell us what you think and give suggestions.
Indeed. Uh, and yeah, subscribe to our channel. We are having this uh, this podcast every week. And whenever there's a beta weekend, we make sure to do record a lot of different fun, interesting stuff and put it out on our channel. We have uh, actually a bunch of uh, Guild Wars 2 footage already that you should uh, go and check out. Indeed. Go check it. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. See you guys. See you.